I guess there's a lot of sail makers here, so this is a, a specialist sail. I mean, what's important to me is the way it's all joined together, the tension, the, the sense that this thing could almost, almost be made out of steel. Um, that it's a drum extremely taut and um, pulled to a very particular form. Fundamentally, I think I feel that I make art for myself. If, if it works for me, I make the assumption that it'll work for somebody else. There is some kind of a moment of recognition between what I know and what I see. And it's the quality and depth of that recognition that I think has something to do with the energy and meaning of a work. Yeah, this is still a work in progress. This is all wet. I mean, I wonder what the academicians would make of that. You know, Gainsborough, Reynolds and the rest. Look, I mean, the entire column is covered in wax. Still, there are more adventurous members of the academy of the past, like Turner. I think Turner would have approved. So the first part of the show here is all about colour. So we'll build it into the wall, so there's no... Um, um, it's so not, that, it's, so it's, yeah. you say build it into the walls. So yeah. So it's not an object in the space. Right. But there's a wall all the way around it, and it, it's simply a kind of presence, a right. negative, a negative presence. Yes. Um, but at a, it's a very deep, deep yellow. It's that one. And the problem, of course, is to get it matte enough. You know, it's a dreamy moment of yellow. I hope. Did you think of the show in relation to these spaces? As oh, well? definitely. It's a journey. I want to make a show that is about experience. OK. We need to either extend this cantilever or something. Well, we're on day 23 of the installation. Adam's just about to start painting the yellow piece. He's been sanding for the last two weeks. them yet? Photographs from Dave. It's when you come down to the nitty-gritty of how things are done, you know, all that stuff, and how not to compromise. So that's, I think, the, 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 the hard stuff. The hard bit is how not to compromise and lose the real edge in the practicalities that now confront us. And, you know, so I'm, I'm determined. That's not going to happen. How are you doing, Phil? Yeah. You all right? Yeah. The hard thing on a day like today is to find the time to just be quiet, really, which is also necessary. Yeah. What's your routine as an artist? 
I think one has to have the courage to sit in an empty studio and wait for something to happen um, and uh, work and um, play and experiment and try some daft idea out. For me, anyway, one has to dare. OK, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm going to go there so wholeheartedly that it feels inevitable. But perhaps the worst part of that is that I won't know what it's like until opening night. As a young artist, it was representing Britain at the Venice Biennale in 1990 that raised Kapoor's international profile. There, for the first time, was a proper world audience. I made a show that I feel pretty good about. It had wonderful impact and changed my life completely. Up to then, I think I'd felt that it was me kind of trying to tell people what it was I was doing. From that moment onwards, it's the people telling me what I was doing. The following year, he scooped the ultimate endorsement for a young artist, the prestigious Turner Prize. His exhibition at the Haywood Gallery in 1998 crowned his achievements with a show that captured the imagination of the public. His show at the Hayward remains to this date one of the most popular shows in terms of the attendance of any show in the history of the Hayward. And I think this has to do really with, while it's quite complex work, it also has an immediate point of access and it's immediately rewarding. A new series of works are made from concrete. These are a departure not just in style and material, but also because they're made by machine. You're dividing this in layers, but well, if, that if, means I'm a, if I'm in a cross section. If we have, the problem is always to have enough space occupied around the edge, yeah. so we don't have to fill all of the middle with, with stuff. On that plane, we go like that, and then we go across there, but we're building, in fact, we're building this circular round edge. So let's say we start there, and we're going for that shape. Might do a bit of the shape there, then we'll catch up a bit of it over here. Yep. And we'll go across there just because it's convenient, catch a bit of it there, catch a bit of it here, yep. maybe come back here, and so on. He loves the mistakes. I mean, for example, that big uh, form over there, the huge cylindrical silo thing, where half of it has kind of collapsed during the process, um, that was not deliberate. Uh, that is, in fact, a mistake, but it's a mistake that Anish liked. They, they look like they've been built by some strange kind of mindless termite or animal or something. You want to touch them. It's like putting the cream through one of those squeezy things with cooking. But they do make these extraordinarily exotic shapes. On the one hand, they're containers. On the other hand, they're architectural, they're sexual, but they're also scatological. And it's, I think, the combination of these very different feelings one gets is partly what's so fascinating about it. The scale here is not in darkness or depth. The scale here is not in color. But the scale lies in the way in which they all seem to be either miniaturizations of something much larger or enlargements of something much smaller. 